guys, this is Zor of Water. Welcome back to some more Final Fantasy X. In the last episode, we crossed over into the Moonflow and we got our new party member, Riku, all the way back from the beginning of the game. Her HP is downright pitiful, so we need to get that working if I want to use her as soon as I can. Um, but now we are over here at Guadalajara and we shall be entering Guadalajara. By the way, this floor looks absolutely gorgeous and I kind of wish there was a little bit more lighting or something to like because I... It feels like this area seems very empty and it really shouldn't be. Um, is there any hidden treasure chest by any chance? Because it... There's, there's these extend extensions that make it feel like there's something here, but I don't see anything. Okay, whatever. Into Guadalajara. We have been expecting you, Lady Yuna. Welcome to Guado Salam. This way, my lady. This way. Uh, uh, me? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, I beg your pardon. I am called Trommel Guado. I am in the direct service of our leader, the great Seymour Guado. Lord Seymour has very important business with Lady Yuna. Business with me? Whatever could it be, I wonder? Please, come inside the manor. All will be explained. Of course, your friends are also welcome. Twist our arms, why don't you? Ah, I almost forgot. Alright, so we're actually stepping back into ju tutorial mode. Uh, Rika's actually going to tell us how to customize our equipment. So now that you've seen that all of our different equipments have all these slots, we can actually add in some abilities into those slots. I don't think we're able to add more slots onto a weapon. So you would need to find like high slot weapons, if that makes sense. If any of the slots in the abilities window show at the bottom is it's empty, yada yada yada, the gear can be customized. If it already has abilities on there, you cannot overwrite those abilities and it cannot be customized. So that's very sad, but you know what? What can you do? After selecting the gear to customize, so it's essentially very similar to how we upgrade Aeons. We have to... Um, it only gives us a set amount of abilities because only some abilities are used for weapons or armor. It's not like uh, ward or proof weapons can be, or ward or proof skills can be applied to weapons because they're mostly armor skills. Um, but anyways, it's going to show you items required to give that ability to that weapon and it'll use up that amount to actually apply it. Anything that's in gray means you don't have the item or you just have an insufficient amount. You click on the ability to add. You're going to be asked for a final confirmation. And so usually by adding abilities onto items, you it will actually change the name of the item overall. What would you do without me? For whatever reason, it's, it's now added into our menu, but for whatever reason, if I can find the stupid item, the Brotherhood, uh, wait, excuse me, what? Oh, the phone. Okay, for whatever reason, usually by this point, the Brotherhood gets two additional abilities, which I recall was a Plustering Strength and a Water Strike. Or, or yeah, Water Strike after talking with Riku and getting the ability to customize. For whatever reason, I'm not, so I guess it happens at a different point, but I know for sure I can't customize customize it at this point, which confuses me greatly, actually. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Uh, is there anything I can customize right now? Uh, Yuna, Yuna's probably just gonna be rocking that for a little bit. Let's see, anything that people are using at the moment that I can customize? It doesn't look like it. Actually, I could customize Orin's thingamabobber. And look at these things that I cannot select. 
I believe for the ward ones, you need at least 50 of that item, and for the proof ones, you need 99. I could be wrong. I could be very well wrong. Uh, let's see. HP plus 5. Oh my god, and HP plus 20%. Oh, automed. Automed means I can just automatically use it to cure status ailments. Um, uh, or no. Auto mend means that when the character is afflicted with a status ailment, he's gonna immediately use an item without using up his turn. Likewise, auto phoenix means that he's gonna immediately use a phoenix down on a KO'd character. I don't think it applies if he himself is KO'd. So, you know what? Just to make things just just to show what's going on, um, I might as well just put a defense plus three on here. I'm probably gonna get a better. Seeker's Bracer at some point in my life, so it doesn't matter if I waste this one. So I've used a few Power Spears, and I've made a Metal Bracer with a defense plus three. So yeah, that's a, that's essentially upgrading in a nutshell. Um, is there anything else I really want to do in terms of upgrade? I don't think so at this point. Right now, our weapons and whatnot are kind of in a good standing. So I don't really feel the need to mess around with that. I did not know there was a save spear here, and I, n I actually never came in this area. Oh, how fair you, Sir Guardian. It seems that Maester Seymour has returned to Guado Salam. He's young, but he deserves our respect. Huh. Okay, uh, sir? Sir? Uh, okay, I can actually get past you. Care to hear about the far plane or the pyre flies? Oh shoot, you can tell me two different stories. Uh, let's talk about the far plane first. Ahem. The far plane's the place where pyre flies born from ascending gather. They appear in the shape of people who've died and gone to the far plane. Quite the phenomenon, how I wish I understood it more fully. The owl bed have a theory, you know. They say the pyreflies are just reacting to visitors' thoughts and dreams. But only the dead appear on the far plane. No image of the living has ever been seen. It's a great mystery, but maybe, maybe the dead leave a bit of themselves in the hearts of the living. And that little bit borrows the pyreflies' power for their paranormal performance. Or maybe not, who knows. And that, as they say, is that. Ah, uh, Macon, you and your Gary. kind words of wisdom. All right, can you tell me more about the pyreflies? Ahem. They may be called pyreflies, but they aren't really flies, you see. They're those lights you see whenever a fiend dies. The little fellows are responsible for a few fantastic phenomena. Visions of the past, spheres, fiends, these are all the pyreflies doing. In fact, pyreflies have something to do with aeons, too. The dreams of the faith reach through the spirit of the summoner. And that which is unreal becomes real for all to see. Or maybe not, who knows. And that, as they say, is that. Okay, so pyreflies are not really a soul or spirit or something, they're just kind of there. It's like a, halluci a hallucination effect, I guess you can say. We want to help the warrior monks patrol the roads beyond. Why wouldn't we do all we can for the good of Spira? So, Guanos, from what I can tell, they're like kind of tallish elf people, like, but they have kind of elongated, not so much claws, just appendages from their fingers and feet. Mostly their hands. Their hands are freaking huge. Their arms are also a lot longer, and they have little elf ears. I always thought of them being super cool, and as such, that unfortunately comes with an attraction for Seymour, because Seymour is a guado. I wouldn't say attraction, though. That's uh, a little bit over the top. There's a mega potion right over here. Are there places that I can explore right now? Oh, and he's doing an errand train. Fine. Uh, let's see how much I can explore before actually going in. Ooh, hello, is this the shop? Lord Seymour instructs the Guado youth on numerous subjects. Thanks to him, I've learned about Yevon's teachings and the history of Spira. Thou seemest weary, good traveler, would thou st- Oh, this is an inn! No, this is not an inn. This is old Guado speak. 
This tis old Guado, I speak. A tongue seldom heard with an even Guado Salam now. Good traveler, prithee, prithee forgive us our anti antiquated prattling. Good God, I thought uh, old English was bad. I mean, old English is really bad for me to speak because I freaking can't speak it or understand it. But uh, this is starting to climb up there. <laughs> oh, wonderful. This this place does look really nice, though. It looks very bland from the outside. I guess it's because it's intertwined with all the built, uh, walls and such, so it kind of doesn't look as bright and open. Um, but no, the inside of these places look real nice. Ooh, freaking, it reminds me of a fairy tale. That's a treasure chest! Meh! My husband has long served as a guardian to the leaders of the Guado. He says he accompanies Lord Seymour all over Spira. Is that Tr- Are you talking about Trommel? Oh, and you're a merchant. Kinda figured. Uh, these are surprisingly cheap, but they purposely sell you a bunch of items that have at least one slot, since they just taught us about customization. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get a Shimmering Blade. I- Actually, hang on, before I do that, I don't- I know there's a way for us to get it in battle, but the Shimmering Blade with an open slop is probably one of Orin's best weapons at this point. So I'll just go ahead and actually grab it. Uh, for Riku, yeah, she's gonna need better, better equipment because she has a single slot, but it doesn't really do much. She uses Targs, so might as well equip that. I swear to god, if I just wasted money, which I could have saved in the Wagas. Thank you. Okay, so what do you have? Water strike, yada yada. Poison touch that ain't gonna help me. Blind pass, I mean, he already has dark attack. Death touch isn't gonna help me. You have the shimmering blade for cheaper! Son of a bitch! Okay, that was kind of my fault. That was entirely my fault. I'm sorry, Waka. I betrayed you. Uh. Let's chat. I tell you. These Guado merchants are shrewd. Ripping off the pilgrims that come to visit the fire plane. Listen, you watch that they don't get you too. Me you can trust. More than a Guado at least. What do you say? <laughs> I mean, sorry sir, they, they already got me. <laughs> Whoopsies! Alright, is there anything else? Anything else? Uh, no, there's still a few more buildings around here. I'm actually a little surprised. Ooh, what's this? 3,000 gil! Okay, I feel a little bit better. As sole protectors of the fire plane, the Guadar are the supreme race of Spira. We are fundamentally different from the populous humans and the hulking Ronso. But that's an old story, now the Guado seek harmony with other races. I mean, I don't know if you can find any sort of harmony with that pompous attitude! And love to step away from the Guado glories and play for a different team once in a while. Why, if they paid me enough, I even play for the Albed. You find it difficult telling us Guado apart, don't you? I suppose you think we all look the same. Yes, actually, I very much do. Can I talk to you, sir? Say, you've played for the Bethesda Oryx. You're Titus, right? I saw you at the tournament. Let's split sometime. These fiends really made a mess. Some of my teammates were badly hurt. Right! Hold on! I forgot if I press square. Ooh. I have to play five games in order to bring this guy on board. Meanwhile, I have to play six games. Okay, I really should be doing blitz. But wait, hang on! That I saw something on the floor! Hang on a second, hang on a second. Someone! Some poor Guado dropped an now bed primer. Okay, so S to M, and I am Type Man. Tip Man, whatever that says. Alright. I should probably stop exploring Guado Salam and, uh, going into the building to talk to Seymour, but you know what? This is too much fun. Since embracing Yemen, we Guado have learned joy that is Blitzball. I kind of wish we saw a Guado team during that tournament, actually. It's fine, we Guado, you're used to that sort of thing. Can I actually. Oh, snap, I can. Oh, freaking 14 games. Uh, if only I enjoyed Blitz more than I really should. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he won't let us in unless we talk to Seymour. Fine! Uh, there was one guy I didn't talk to. Where did you go, kind sir? There you are. Humans! Humans! A summoner and her guardians! Okay, I guess they're just very excited to see humans. Anyways, onward to the manor. Which, by the way, is a really cool looking manor. It's really big and spacious, too. And then you see all these Guado men on the side. I don't like the smell of this one, eh? Also, Waka is right to be unhappy after Trauma will try to freaking grab Yuna like that. These are the past leaders of the Guado. They all look the same. Mr. Seymour doesn't look like them, no. Don't you know? The last leader. Maester Jiskel wed a human woman. She was Seymour's mother. Oh. The last leader, Maester Jiskel. Okay, so she's just gonna repeat the same thing over and over again. Oren! Stay close to Yuna. That I will. I wonder what smells so nice. Kimari not like Mr. Seymour. No, oh, I, I guess you also have your own opinions about Seymour. Good for you, Kimari. Why does he want to see me? Okay, so I think maybe if I... There we go. This way, please. Anything you want to say to us, Trommel? This way, please. Aside from the passive-aggressive this way, feel it sounds like you're luring us into a trap of some sorts. I will go inform Lord Seymour. Please wait here. Okay, so we just have a giant banquet. Look at all this food! Why was he expecting us again? Sorry about the sudden cut over there. But yeah, this is a giant, giant banquet. And it looks like we can talk to all of our characters again. I get the feeling he called us up here for more than just dinner. Yeah, you think? At least you're smart enough to realize that. Stay on your guard. Why? This guy is just a priest, right? Those with power use that power. Maesters have power. Wait. You sure you don't have something against Yevon? <laughs> <laughs> I lived a long time in Xanarkand. Ah. There's no temple here in Guadasalam, see? Summoners usually just pass through on their way elsewhere. <laughs> what? I didn't even ask a question and you're explaining things. You'd rather I say nothing then? No, no. Maybe you finally believe I don't know anything about Spira. And maybe that means you believe me about Xanarkin, too? Well, there are many things I do not know. Your Xanarkind is one of those things. I suppose I can't say what I think either way. Still, be careful. You shouldn't tell other people. Yeah, I know. Freaking, it's been a while since we left Poseidon Island, and after that scene with Lulu just now, and what, let's see, when Waka was showing us that underwater uh, city back in the Moonflow, it's definitely reassuring that they're starting to kind of believe us when we don't know things, and they're just uh, kind of going into overdrive, automatically explaining all this. It's actually kind of nice, and I really like it. Kimari speak no more. Meanwhile, Kamari, although he talks, he, uh, is very straightforward. Mmm, this is good! What could it be? Oh... Truly, it is good to have guests again. Since Lord Jiskel passed away, these halls have been too quiet. 
The death of Lord Jiskel was a great loss for all of Spira. Was this Maester Jiskel really such a great guy? He brought the teachings of Yevon to the Guado. He was truly a great man. Truly a loss for us all. But now a new leader, Lord Seymour, has come before us. Lord Seymour is the child of a Guado and a human. He will be the tie that binds our two races together. But that is not all, I think. Lord Seymour, he will surely become the shining star that lights the way for all the peoples of Spira. That is enough, Trommel. Must I always endure such praise? Welcome. You wanted to see me? Please, make yourselves at home. There's no rush. Please keep this short. Yuna must rush. Pardon me. It has been a long time since I had guests. Lady Yuna, this way. This sphere is a reconstruction created from the thoughts of the dead that wander the far. Xanarkand? Correct. Xanarkand, as it looked 1,000 years ago. The great and wondrous Machina city, Xanarkand. She once lived in this metropolis. <laughs> she who? Lady Unaleska! She was the first person to defeat Sin and save the world from its ravages. And you have inherited her name. It was my father who named me. Lord Braska was entrusting you with a great task. He wanted you to face Sin as Lady Unaleska did. However, Lady Unaleska did not save the world alone to defeat the undefeatable Sin. It took an unbreakable bond of love, of the kind that binds two hearts for eternity.
Wow, your face is beet red. You okay? He... He asked me to marry him. You serious? Uh, hey! You know what Yuna must do. Of course. Lady Yuna... No, all summoners are charged with bringing peace to Spira. But this means more than just defeating Sin. She must ease the suffering of all Spira. She must be a leader for the people. I proposed to Lady Yuna as a maester of Yevon. Spira is no playhouse. A moment's diversion may amuse an audience, but it changes nothing. Even so, the actors must play their parts. There's no need to answer right away. Please, think it over. We will do so then. We leave. Lady Yuna, I await your favorable reply. Why are you still here, sir? I beg your pardon. We Guado are keen to the scent of the far plane. I'm sorry, the way that Orange just kind of pushed Titus out of the way just because he wanted to smell him. That, that's great. Uh, but yeah, Seymour asked Yuna to marry him. That's uh, not something we wanted to do. Not something we wanted to expect. But it's happening, and now we need... F oh, Yuna needs to figure out what she wants to do. That's going to be the end of this episode. Um, in the next episode, I guess we'll be saying goodbye to Guada Salam. Can I actually go upstairs before we leave? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Can I actually... What can I do here? These are large and private chambers, you may not enter, yada yada, fine. That's it? That's everything? Can, can I actually go back in? Oh my god, I can. Are you two still in here? Uh, no, you guys booked it. Like, wow. Wowie, wowie, wow. I love this little pendulum thingy. It it just goes back and forth, never ending. I don't even know why it goes back and forth. Unfortunately, all this food is gonna go to waste. Which is a downright shame, because that looks fantastic. But yeah, that'll be the end of this episode. In the next episode, I guess we're gonna go make our way to Makalania Temple. And we'll have to see whether or not Yuna is gonna accept that proposal. Zor Water signing out. I'll see you guys in the next one.